So continue on with my deck profile trend for Vanguard here. I'm moving over to V series or V format. I've got my Nubatama deck centered around Evil Stealth Dragon Magoroku Fugen. So honestly, the reason I got into Nubatama in V series was just because it was a really cheap deck to build, and I had fun with Magatsu Storm when it was first revealed, as it was a more complicated deck, though it wasn't good. But it's certainly more it was more of a challenge to play, which I found exciting as opposed to a lot of the decks at the time, which were very straightforward to build and play. So I've just kind of been upgrading Nubatama ever since because outside of the sheer Nui support wave, I've gotten every single support wave and they've all been fairly cheap because none of them have been good. Sheer Nui is probably still the best Nubatama deck, and even then it's being easily pushed out by the best decks coming out of the latest. Uh, the clan collection. But enough of the background, let's just kind of get into it. So since it's a Magoroku Fugen deck, I of course run the four Magoroku Fugen. This one actually supports one of my favorite archetypes in Nubatama, that being the evil decoy tokens. I really liked when Hanzo was released as it gave Nubatama a new focus and less mm, degenerate focus after coming off of the, uh, well, I'm drawing blank on its name, the previous wave of support, the limit your opponent's hand amount card. I don't know why I'm forgetting. It's choice restricted. Uh, premium with uh, the Shiranui stride, the last one. But I was happy to kind of see that uh, Evil Decoy Token was getting a face other than Hanzo to explore new paths, as I really enjoyed Hanzo, and so I was excited to see what they could do with it. And Makaroku Fugen certainly didn't disappoint as a card. It's got three effects, the first of which gives your front row power plus 5,000 for each of your evil decoy tokens on rear guard circle. And the second effect gives your front row plus one crit if your opponent's vanguard's at grade three and you have three or more evil decoy tokens. So just a huge power buff to the front row and the extra critical so they're all swinging for two crits just means that offensive output of the Mag with Magoroku Fugen as Vanguard is very different than pretty much all other Nubatama decks. And nothing in Nubatama really matches this in offensive output, or at least for Vanguard-centric cards. And that's not even all its effects. It also has a third effect, that when your rearguards return to your hand, that you can call an evil decoy token to rearguard circle, and uh, then you can counterblast one and get an imaginary pr gift to protect and put it on that uh, the called unit circle. So this last skill is actually a bit of a ruling nightmare. If you don't call and you go protect two, you um, actually, I don't know the ruling on that one. I know for protect one, if you go protect one, but you call the rear guard, you have to uh, put the marker on that circle so that it fizzles out, so you don't really get anything. But I, the intended use case for this is that you call an evil decoy token, counter boss one, and you protect two, so you put the protect two on that circle. So that's, I know that's the intended case of this card. But um, the other nice thing is you can actually still get the Protect 1 marker if you just don't call an Evil Decoy token. How it's worded is you can you don't have to call the Evil Decoy token, but you can still play the Count Boss 1 to get the marker. I also don't know the ruling if you don't call 1 and get a Protect 2. But frankly, in all this I don't know, it actually doesn't apply to this deck because you really don't use this skill. It's We have a lot of other pieces in deck that Counter Blast, and the Counter Chargers are very clunky to try to put in this deck. And you'll see why. So we really just focus on maximizing this first skill, or the first two skills just put out a lot of offensive output that, again, Nubatama historically hasn't had. So a bit sad we can't meld all three effects perfectly. The third effect still comes in handy, just not in its uh, protect marker acceleration. So, and that just more comes from Nubatama's card pool very, being very lacking. And while we have great cards for individual strategies, they don't meld bounce, discard, and evil decoy tokens very well, and honestly the card pool for Nubatama feels very underpowered compared to a lot of other clans, where they kind of just do the one thing, so they're more situationally good than generically good, and I think that's the reason why we can't meld all these effects so well with Magoroku Fugen, and we have to pick and choose. But with that being said though, we definitely want to, I definitely want to try to make this work best I can, so this deck build really focuses on those first two skills, which I think makes the better version of the deck than, say, a, a, a Protect Marker Acceleration. But yeah, since Magoroku Fugen is our main one, we run it at four copies. We don't have any backup grade threes to ride, so more important that we do get them, because our only other grade three, other than like our heel guardian, which I put with the triggers, is our Mizukaze here. And the reason I run Mizukaze is because it is one of the most annoying cards to actually deal with. 
when and can really just win you games despite no matter how big your opponent's hand is. Because that's one of the things New Baton has historically kind of struggled with is actually putting out enough offensive pressure to be able to chip away at your opponent's hand. And Mizu Kaze is kind of that workaround. As when placed on rearguard circle, you can soul blast one grade three. And I'm not going to bother reading out how the effect what the effect actually says because it's easier to explain it in practice. Pretty much once the effect what the effect says that once you call a certain grade of card to guardian circle, you can cannot call that grade for the your opponent cannot call that grade for the rest of the turn. So for example, if say the Mizukaze attacks, your opponent drops a grade two 5k shield, they cannot call another grade two for the rest of that battle phase to guardian circle. This does not affect intercept, so intercept still goes through as normal and does not affect what you can guard with. Furthermore, since with Guardian you can call multiple cards at the same time, you, your opponent can still say call two grade zeros to Guardian Circle at the same time to block a stronger attack. And that is allowed, it's just from there on out they can't call any more grade twos. So what pretty much in practice what this means is that once your opponent uses a grade to guard one of your attacks, they cannot use that grade for any further attacks, from guarding from hand that is. So really powerful card. I actually have gameplay footage going up after the, the day after this deck profile goes live. That really shows how this card almost really can leverage the game in your favor even when you're behind. Because this effect is honestly super unfair as it directly impedes a core mechanic of the game. And while this card has been fine up until now, Magoroku Fugen really pushes this card because of that just front row crit pressure. It just means if your, your opponent needs to... If your opponent's at 4 or 5 damage, all your attacks are threatening lethal, which before that just didn't exist to make the Mizukaze that great. Multi-attack existed, but it was super situational, and on top of that, you're, it's without the inherent crit pressure, if your opponent, you have to force your opponent to 5 damage, but that can be tricky with, um, it can be a bit tricky, it's been tricky to do that with New Batama because its offensive output has been very lacking. So it's like you couldn't get into a situation where this card is super good, but in this deck, it's still not, it still can't get there to make it super meta relevant, but it can certainly do that to make it powerful. So that's sort of our offensive core is those two cards right there. But the question then becomes, how can we abuse this further? And we can actually abuse this further with the grade two here, Goanohi, because her effect is at the end of battle that it attacked, you can counter blast two, return her to hand to call a Goanohi from hand to rear guard circle, and it gets 10,000 power. So this card is pretty much an additional attack. It's very expensive, but in a deck like this, these multiple attacks, especially under Mizukaze, are just deadly. Because since they're all can threaten lethal, your opponent can only guard with so much. With the grade 3 heal guardians, it makes it a bit easier, but also with the power boost, that means that your opponent might have to combine cards in hand, and they just won't always have the proper combination to out Mizukaze's guard restrict. So just being able to get that fourth attack is super good. This card's also another reason we don't use Magoroku Fugen's ability because it is counter blast two, but we really like her because she is a, she enables the multi-attack herself. While we do have another multi-attack card, it does not do that. So really good card just to kind of put out that offensive pressure. And even if you're not under Mizukaze, it's still very good offensive pressure with Magoroku Fugen just to be able to get a fourth attack out that is swing for plus 15k plus one crit. As I said, we do have another multi-attack card in the deck, and that is, if I can find it here, the Jogunro. Jogunro is a bit more situational, but it costs less. It's only counter blast one, and it's triggered when you're when a rear guard is placed on rear, or when your unit is placed on rear guard circle. And this is ideally more of a Magatsu Storm type card to kind of get out. Uh, since Magatsu Storm can only call three, this calls itself out as another booster. But in this deck, it's really neat. Because if you can bounce something during the battle phase, Magro Kufugen calls out an evil decoy token, which procs this effect, and you can actually call this over the evil decoy token if need be. So just a really nice card. And the other nice thing is, if you have multiples at hand, you can actually proc, um, say if you have two, that's really the ideal situation, you can actually proc both of them to get up to five attacks in a turn. Uh, if you even have the counter blast, you can go and you have one of these in hand and a Go-Nohi out on board. That's three counter blast play, but you can soon Go-Nohi, bounce her back to hand, and then call her to the opposite column. And then off of that skill, you then use Maguro Kufugen to call the decoy token to the open rearguard circle that Goanohi left. 
and then you use this skill to call it over the evil decoy token. So, so a lot of powerful, just great ways to create multi-attack in this deck to really maximize on the uh, plus 15k plus one crit from Agroku Fugen and the guard restrict of Mizukaze here. Um, Jogaro actually has, technically has a second skill. Uh, when it's retired, you can search out a copy from it from your deck, and that's during your opponent's turn. But uh, this deck doesn't, if you're, this deck, it's, again, this is a Magatsu Storm card. So it's ideal that you use it retired off of Magatsu Storm, but in this deck, we don't really have, we don't run Magatsu Storm. We don't have any cards that retire our stuff on our opponent's turn. So we're kind of, this effect can go off if your opponent retires it, but frankly, why would your opponent retire this if you can just add a 10k shield to hand? I don't see this being too relevant unless your opponent just has a board wipe, which if it does, neat, but not too prevalent right now, and the opponent probably just would choose not to. So, but that's our kind of main offensive engine. Now, of course, then the question becomes, we need evil decoy tokens to gain that power and that crit. So how do we actually get those evil decoy tokens? Well, probably our best way to do that here is our four copies of the Kurogiri. As normally, I've always kind of undervalued this card. I always thought it really wasn't that great. It's pretty expensive to do very little. But turns out in this deck, the simplicity of its skill is exactly what it needs to be perfect for this deck. Just Soul Blast 2, return it to hand, call two evil decoy tokens, and because this bounces itself back to hand, that means it procs Maguroku Fugen's ability to call a third evil decoy token, which gives us our easy three for Maguroku Fugen's two continuous skills. So that's why I really like this card here. It is a bit expensive, but we do have ways to kind of make build up soul not too great. You have to be very careful about when you use this and that you're not just spamming it and make sure you time it very well as soul isn't the easiest to come by in this deck, but at the same time, that's just such an easy way to do it. And you will at some point have two soul in game. So it works out very well to set that up. Our other setup here is the Yamashibuki as when it attacks you can count boss one, bounce a rear guard to hand to call two evil decoy tokens. And since it bounces, another Maguroku Fugen pop, a, a proc, to call a third evil decoy token. And then on top of it, it gains an additional 5,000 for each of your evil decoy tokens on rearguard circle. So this is just a huge beater. The reason this is only at three is because the lines with it, especially with our multi-attackers, are very awkward. This is great if you're not going to go for any of the multi-attack plays because it's just not realistic for that turn or you don't have the counter blast for it. We have a counter blast for this. This is just a phenomenal beater. And honestly, it's not a bad just call target even if you're not using it just to get the extra power. But alas, the counter boss one means it's one less counter boss for our multi-attackers. And furthermore, to actually have the its effect to call the evil decoy tokens, which would proc Jog and Row, have active, that means you need to swing once. And you're running into one of two scenarios. Either you're swinging once without the power buff from Maguroku Fugen, which isn't the most ideal. Sometimes you'll do it, but it's certainly not the ideal play if you have other plays. Or you're just spending a counter boss to bounce when you already have the evil decoy tokens set up just to get out of Jog and Row. Which sometimes it will be worth it, but it's still that makes Jog and Row a counter boss too without the power gain that Go No He has. So it's definitely not our best combo enabler. It is one, thus it's still worth running at three copies. And even for the turns we're not going for it, uh, Yamashibuki is still a great card to have, or just as a beater, as I said. So those are our enablers. So the rest of the main deck is kind of made up of just some odds and ends that really help our deck. The first one is definitely the four, Magatsu Gale, as it is the best generic card in Nubatama still. It's over like a three and a half years, not quite three and a half years, but it's well over three years past its initial release. And it's still, I think, just the best card in Nubatama for the most part. And that's just because it, what it does, while overcosted by today's B standards, it's just... It just does what you need it to. It is a uh, counter boss one, soul boss one to draw one and gain power, which is great. I mean, the free, just the free draw here in a deck that doesn't plus otherwise is a huge deal. And then the power is also just nice to hit better numbers. On top of that, its second ability is probably one of the best bounce effects, though it definitely is feels very underpowered at times. At then about attacks, you put to soul to bounce a rear guard to hand. As you're going kind of minus one on board to bounce something back, you're essentially going minus one to return something to hand. It's not, doesn't sound great, but it just, it's so simple and easy to get off and it's free of all of their costs 
that it ends up working out well for this deck, as this is one of the best, or the best enabler for Jog and Row, uh, if you don't have the counter boss to use Go No Hate. And on top of that, it also is one of our main soul givers to, or soul fuelers for Kurogiri. So this card, despite feeling very overcosted and underpowered, especially in today's uh, landscape for V, it still tr proves to be the best due to Nubatama's kind of lacking card quality, especially on the generic end. It just does what it needs to very easily. Thus, it's an easy four copies in the deck. It's also a phenomenal grade two ride target, especially if you need to get the draw to see more pieces. So that's another great thing, as Kurogiri can also be a fantastic ride target, but at the same time, you're not really using it to its fullest potential if you do so. Sure, you're getting the two evil decoy tokens and a bounce, but you could also wait a turn, use that same kind of boss to get three evil decoy tokens, which usually is actually better. And it saves and also you really want to maximize your counter blast usage in this deck with such a heavy counter blast focus. So it is noting Yamashibuki can be played as a um, fine ride target. It just certainly isn't the best in the deck, and I think it's better safe for rear guard circle. Uh, rounding some other cards, we're rounding out grade two lineup, even though I haven't been really going in order. Uh, I run three Jiajin, and that's just because it is probably the best counter charger for the deck, and it also fuels the soul for Kurogiri. So it just made a lot of sense to me to run this card. It doesn't bounce anything, so it doesn't necessarily synergize with the Jogunro or Magoroku Fugen. But if you've already called two tokens, say off of a Kurogiri that turn, it, it gains 5k, which is nice for its attacker. So with the Magoroku Fugen buff, it can be 29k total. And then it just kind of moves out of the way if you need the open rear guard circle for combos, such as if you have a Goonohi in the other column. It leaves space for Dragon Row. So there's definitely just a lot of nice plays that you can make with this to just kind of clear up board, not have to overcall as much, and refuel your resources. Only need three because obviously it's not one of our main combo enablers. It's just a nice card to have if you see it. Rounding out the uh, non triggers in the deck, I run four Katara Gitsune as our Great Thief Searcher. As we're only running our four main ride targets, we want as many ways to be able to find them, and Katara Gitsune is the best way to do that. Great Grey 1 ride target, just check top 5 at it. It's also nice in this deck that you can bounce it back to hand to replay its effect if you just need to keep searching, whether it be for your Maguro Kafugans, your Mizukazes if you need it in the late game, or maybe you just need a heal Guardian in the early game. So this card's really nice. It also does get its power-up effect, making a 13k attacker on its own, since we're running evil decoy tokens, or running a token in this deck. So that makes it just a very nice attacker as well. So I really like it. It's a really great ride target as this deck, it, it's really our best ride target because Dragon Row and Kroger are our only ride targets and they don't do anything on Vanguard Circle. So just made a lot of sense to run this card in this deck. Moving on, well, actually, there's one more card that's part of the non-trigger lineup and that's the starter. You can really run any of them. I just like the Ushimitsu Maru because it is the evil stealth dragon set themed with the tokens. And if I was running more competitive, I probably would switch this out for a different star. Maybe like the uh, Madoi, I believe its name is, to fake out like I'm playing Shinui. But since I'd really just playing this for casual play, I kind of like the thematicism of running the evil decoy token starter. Moving on to triggers, I run, it is a 3-3 split of the Gambaku and the Kuragiri for the crits. So it's just six crits here. I think six crits is enough. Well, I should say, I should say six crits is enough. Six crits is nice in this deck, as you can definitely push some early damage if you check them to try to get them to four as soon as possible. And it can also make your opponent have to guard Vanguard if they're at three, risking checking a critical trigger. The biggest reason I only run sixes, though, is because this deck doesn't plus much and it does need to see its pieces, so I need to run the draw triggers to supplement it. So I feel like just the 6-6 six, six split between draws and crits is the best to go. For draws, of course, run the four draw PGs, as these are just objectively better than the regular PGs. And we're allowed to run the Sentinels, and it just I, there's no room for the grade 1 Sentinels. You wouldn't, and plus, I think it's pretty widely accepted that you need a specific case to run them in V. And then the reason I don't run the crit sentinels is because I'm going protect two with this deck to make use of the evil decoy tokens unless I absolutely need to go protect one. So I just liked having these PGs here as well. It also helps with my overall guard value of the deck as if I was running the crit sentinels, I would have to be filling these out with 5k, which isn't too ideal for me, honestly. Then I run for the final draw, just the two um, Otsuzura. You can also run the draw trigger coming out of 
the Shiranui set uh, set 11, but I just had these on hand, so that's why I included in the deck. But uh, these are really great discard targets if need be for stuff, like such as PGs, or I uh, don't think this deck really discards too much outside of that. Or uh, Katari Gates, another great target. So definitely, it's... It's definitely there just because we need the draw, but it still has some uses. I can't say that um, if you ever need an easy discard target, it's nice to have those. Rounding out the trigger lineup, three heal guardians. These are really great just in case you're playing against something aggressive. It can help you survive longer. It's also a different grade if you're facing the mirror match, funny enough. I think it's just widely accepted for the most part that the loss of 5k shield is totally worth it for all these effects as well. And also if you get damage tonight. So definitely, uh, I haven't been missing the 20k shields so, really like this card, and it's nice that I can also be searched off the Katara Gitsune. But that is it for the deck. Of course, you don't want to forget you need your Evil Decoy tokens, and your Protect markers here, and your Quick Shield. So, got all that to the side, but those are all extras. I don't think there's really anything else to say about them. But, now that I've kind of gone over all the cards in the deck, let me switch over to some test hands to kind of show off what this deck wants to do. So, just like I did in the last deck profile, I want to show off two starting hands and starting out, one going first, one going second. So let's see this hand, so we got Magatu Gale, Goenohi, Heal Crit, and the Kurogiri. That is pretty good. We don't see any grade threes here, but that's not too surprising, well, other than the Mumio Kongo. So of course, let's throw these two back, Mumio Kongo not really that great going first, most of the time, I should say. But here, then I'll say throw back the Goenohi just to be able to find have another chance to hit our grade 3, and Magatsu, because Magatsu Gale and Kurogiri are fine write-ups, and Magatsu Gale is actually the preferred one, so let's see. Jaijin, okay, not bad. Draw trigger, okay. Jogging row, okay. So, some good cards in hand still here, even if we don't have the grade 3. We haven't seen the Katara Gitsune, so we might have to dig a bit for it, but at the same time, with a deck like this, with so many moving parts, not bad. We see some of our parts, at least. So if we can just secure our grade 3, we are looking pretty good here. So I'm just going to shuffle that up, and then we will get started. All right, stand up Vanguard. So we draw for turn, Jog and Row. The two Jog and Rows especially, I really like riding one. I was going to say ride the one we already had anyway, because we want to save the Crow Geary to spawn those tokens. So we get the draw for going first, no Jaijin, and just pass the turn. Now on the opponent's turn, normally they'll just attack once. And here, we do want to take it that we have a counter blast for Magatsu Gale to get the draw. So, unfortunately, it's the Maguro Kufugan. That's how it goes sometimes. So, we move to our turn. Draw. Mizukaze. Okay, interesting. So, we'll ride the Magatsu Gale as said. And do the counter blast one. Soul blast one. Draw one. Gain the 5k. It's another Magatsu Gale. So, not bad. Definitely will allow us to... It will enable us to be able to use the Joggin Row one turn. So, here, if our opponent is a retire deck... I would you do not want to call anything here, but the opponent or if the opponent is a retire deck, we don't really want to call anything here. But if it's not, call the Kurogiri just so our opponent's more likely to take this attack. So here we'll just say my opponent is not. That way we can try to push some damage. So we get to attack here and it's 23k. We get our drive check. Kurogiri. Alright. So going over to our opponent's turn. Here we probably want to take more damage. Since we're going first, we probably won't want to use the Joggin Row. But since we haven't even seen our Maguro Kufugan, we probably want to use Magatsu Gale next turn. So we'll take a damage here. Yamashibuki, okay. Let's say our opponent attacks again. And let's just say we can use one of the Jaijins here to card. So going back over to our turn. We stand and we draw. Yamashibuki, not bad. So here, actually, I think it's important. Ride the, ride the Mizukaze because we want to see our Maguro Kufugan. And this gives us an additional time to check to see it. And on top of that, it sets up a grade 3 and so if we can find another Mizukaze. So I think that's super huge there. That'll be really good. As well as... So we have options here. We can, of course, dig deeper with our Magatsu Gale. But we also have a power play with Yamashibuki. Especially since our power will be kind of lacking this turn without the Magoroku Fugen on Vanguard Circle. But I do think it is... Oh, and if we use the Magatsu Gale, we actually lose out on the trigger for Jagan Row as well. So definitely some things to consider here at this juncture. Here though, I'm thinking that it might be, because we still want to put on pressure here. That's the important thing. We do want to put on pressure. So here we can actually call, I think we'll do it this way, we can call the Yamashibuki. We can call, hmm, 
let's call the Jiagen, yes. And here we can actually call another Kurogiri just to give us not give away these two combo cards in hand. That way what we can do is we can actually swing Yamashibuki, counter blast one, bounce the Kurogiri back to hand. And we want to bounce this one because I want the additional power on Vanguard Circle to try to make my opponent hit it, take it. And these two can power itself up anyway. And we get to call two evil decoy tokens off of it. So now Yamashibuki is a 19k attacker versus our opponent's grade 2, which is either 19 or 20k. This will be 20k. We get our twin drive here, so let's see. Draw trigger, pretty good. Power to Jaijin, draw one. Go Inoki, that's going to be nice. Second check, critical trigger. All right. So our opponent didn't guard that, they take it, or else they're going to have to guard more for the Jaijin. So here we can attack, gains the 5k, and the nice thing is we can actually put it to soul to counter charge one, which is nice to kind of get back, especially look in our hand here. So it moves to our opponent's turn. So here, we still don't have our Magoroku Fugin, which is a bit concerning, but we kind of have to start playing hoping we draw into it, unfortunately. So here, I would say we want to make the most of it. So we kind of want to try to take two damage so we have the Goanohi um, uh, Joggenro combo here. So let's just say we take the two. And like in between, so unfortunately another Magoroku Fugin. Of course, it's seeing a damage zone. So we start guarding it. So we do that. And we just use like the two evil decoy tokens plus let's just say the other Kurogiri here to guard that. So it goes over to our turn. We stand and we draw. We draw Magatsu Gale. So unfortunately, we still don't see the Magoroku Fugin. And this will happen in this kind of deck, unfortunately. So with that, we just want to keep digging. Magatsu Gale, Cow Boss 1. So more reason that Jaijin was a great call last turn. Draw one, Kurogiri. And here, of course, we have our multi-attack, but at this point we might as well just kind of save it for if we absolutely need to and just kind of dig for that because this, if we can get a Maguro Kafugan, our multi-attacks won't be pretty devastating with this kind of board setup. Though I shouldn't say that it won't always be right to just kind of start multi-attacking with Goenoki here. Again, since my opponent's board is kind of nebulous here, we don't know. So of course here, we can just call the draw trigger as that was seen last turn. Swing. We can just start continue to create tokens. We're using up our counter blast here, but we kind of had no other choice. Call the two. 19. 20. Twin drive. Crit trigger. So pretty good there. Draw gun row. And then, of course, Magatsu Gale. Magatsu Gale goes to soul. And we can actually bounce this back to hand for more shield. So here you kind of see that. Things aren't really going as planned, and this will happen with the deck. It's the reality of a deck that unfortunately doesn't have the best pieces in the game. So just kind of end this off. We take maybe one more swing of heal trigger, probably heal here. And we can just say that we like intercept the tokens. We use our two Kurogiris here, and probably like, I don't know, PG. Really doesn't matter here. We kind of just fallen behind, probably not going to come back, stand. Draw, and without that grade three, I think that's pretty much it. You can definitely have plays you can make. You could definitely say I've taken like another one, in which case we heal again. So you get a different draw, but even then it's still like a heal. So even if we did say let's take another one, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but at least now we could always still try to make some combos with the opponents at five damage. We have like going, um, we have going no he here to make combos. We got Kurogiri uh, to kind of spawn some more tokens. So of course, could always Soul Blast 2, bounce, create two tokens. And then and we could always Katara Kitsune here. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to see it now, aren't we? Yep. So we can just thin it out. Just say get rid of the, mm, just get rid of a Jog and Row or a Vanguard. So here's just kind of like, it's it's whatever. You kind of need to see your pieces with this deck. So even though it's not too exciting to show off, it just kind of shows, I think it shows a realistic part of the deck, which I want to include here, not to give any false senses that this deck's amazing. But of course, we still have Yamashibuki bounce back to get Evil Decoy token. Um, only, well, we can use Gonohi here. End of attack, counter blast to bounce to hand. Unfortunately, we would be, actually no, because that's 9k. So we would need to rely on triggers here with our Vanguard swing to try to power stuff up. So we can just say if they 
Maybe all there, because they probably will guard. All there, draw, go no fee. So at least now we can swing. Kind of lost two. Return her to hand to call another go no fee. Or you can call the same one. We could use Dragon Rope, but since we already swung Vanguard, we have already lost out on the power. So kind of just fell apart there without the Makaroku Fukin. But let me go to uh, going second hand and hopefully get a bit more, get be able to see my Makaroku Fukin this time. All right, so if we're going second here, let's see the opening hand, and already Magroku Fugen, like to see that. Uh, we can get rid of the Jaijin, the heal, we really need a grade one, so I'm even going to say get rid of Yamashibuki, despite it being an enabler. But at the same time, it's definitely better going first card for our first grade three turn than in this deck where it can get the crit right away. And we get Joggenro and Kurogiri right away, so that's pretty good. We got our enabler there in Kurogiri, so let me just shuffle that deck, and we'll get to our going second turn. All right, let's stand up Vanguard and let our punk go first. Doesn't really interact with us, so we draw for our turn. Draw a second Magroku Fugen. So as you can see, we see none. We then see all of them. It's typically how it goes with this deck. So we'll ride the Dragon Row because we definitely want to keep Kurogiri as our token enabler. So we get the draw one. So we get see a heal trigger here, and we actually do get the quick shield for going second. And here, again, if we're against Retire, a deck that has removal, don't call this, but if you know your opponent's deck likely doesn't have it, you can call it to just make better numbers to swing with. And drive check here. Go no heat. So we're looking pretty good here. We're seeing a lot of good, great pieces here. Let's go to the opponent's turn. Of course, as I said, since we have the Magatsu Storm, we want to take one damage at least. And then from there, we can just guard the rest of it. Let's just say we use the Mumio Kongo to sit. Actually, not Mumio Kongo. Let's say we use the Gambaku to stop whatever else is going on. So we can stand and we can draw. Jaijin, not bad. We can go Magatsu Gale, Power Blast 1, Soul Blast 1, because we will stop the two Soul Blast for our good old Kurogiri here. Draw 1, another Magaroku Fugan. Okay, deck. So here, I would just say swing, see what we get. Draw trigger, not bad. Guitar Gitane, also not bad. So, pretty good start here. We go into our opponent's grade 3 turn. So here we do have the uh, a combo enabled with Goenoki right away. We don't actually need any extra counter blast, so let's just take, let's just say we take, we could even actually choose to only take one damage here and stop everything else with the Mummy of Congo because we have the Jaijin. So let's just say we do that. We take the one damage, it's a draw trigger. We use Ukaze, that's really good. And then we can just drop the Mummy of Congo. And say that stops the rest of the turn if we give our Vanguard 10,000. Maybe, maybe we just also need to use the Quick Shield here as well. So we'll do that. So going into our turn, we're looking set up very well. We see, uh, Yamashibuki, so not bad for another option, and we go Magoroku Fugen. And finally, I can actually pull out our Protect 2 marker here. So, since we're doing Gonohi combos here, and I mean, we're at low damage, we might want to save the Gonohi, but we can also just place it up here. If we don't, in some scenarios, you also want to put back on the Evil Decoy tokens for more, more shield, but as we're able to kind of slow down our opponent's assault and we have a pretty big one, I think we just want the aggressive power here. So we'll call Gonohi. Can call out Jaijin. We don't really need any grade threes, uh, and we already kind of committed to this place. So we don't need the Yamashibuki, so we'll just Soul Blast two, and bounce Kurogiri back to hand. And this is really nice because, of course, next turn we can possibly set up with Yamashibuki since we're running out of Soul. But at the same time, we do have the Jaijin going to Soul, so not too bad here. So with that, oh, we need to finish up. We get to call the two Evil Decoy tokens off of. The Kurogiri and the third one off of Magoroku Fugen's effect, not try, not paying the counter blast for the extra marker. So now we're all set up. We can just move into the battle phase. We can attack with Jaijin since we call two more against the 5,000. So that is 29,000 plus one crit. And we get to just throw it into Soul after it attacks to counter charge one. Then we got Gonohi here, being able to swing. After she swings, oh, that's another 29k. We can counter blast two, return her to hand to call her back out. Plus 10,000, so she's, now she's at 39. We can swing with Vanguard, do our twin drive. Jaijin, awesome. Otsuzura, um, draw trigger, draw one. Katar beats me. 10k shield, awesome at this stage of the game. And we are sitting very good here, as you can then swing again. So that's kind of like a really great um, going second, first grade three turn. Probably couldn't ask for much better. I mean, if we had a Joggin row, of course, we could take another damage. But at the same time now, we can just kind of save stuff to multi-attack with later. So on the opponent's turn, we can certainly guard a lot of this, but at the same time, with the Mizukaze here, we can kind of start planning stuff out. As with Yamashibuki, 
and a Gonohi, we're looking pretty good. So we might just want to take three damage and try to end it off the next turn with that combo. So let's just say we do that. We've got scale. Oats to zero. Draw. Jog and row. Crit. And sure, we got the Jog and row here. But without the soul for the Kuroguri, we might not be able to use it. So that's kind of one thing with Magatsu Gale here. If we hadn't used Magatsu Gale, we would have actually had the soul for another Kuroguri. But actually, since we took so much of them, and we kind of already established my opponent doesn't retire, we can actually leave these up. So I take that back. We might not even need that. So here, let's just say we try to stave off the opponent's offense with all, literally all our other cards. So we can kind of use here Katara Gitsune, Katara Gitsune. Uh, we can even PG if need be. Getting rid of, let's just say, draw trigger for that. So yeah, pretty strong here. So we get over to our turn. Could have even guarded more. Another Dragon Row. So this is interesting. Unfortunately, actually, no, not unfortunately. Well, actually, yeah, we can't do double Dragon Row here. So it's some thinking required, but let's not forget. Reride, grab our next Protect 2 marker. And here, since we're definitely going to call a jog and row, we can give more power to go and know he here. And I think that's correct, because we can just try to end it here. If you are questioning if you get it here, you can always throw it back on one of the tokens as well. That's definitely a valid play. So of course now we have the Mizukaze, Soul Boss 1, restrict the opponents, and we actually have a full five attack combo, which is kind of insane here. Um, another thing, possibility, which I think I'll just show up, Jaijin, to overcall that, hits better numbers. That we can go Jaijin. Soul, counter charge, Gonohi, skill of Gonohi, counter blast 2, return her to hand, and then recall her, Magoroku Fugen, since I bounced, call 1, Jog and Row. Uh, we actually have double Jog and Row here, but it doesn't come up since we still have the Gonohi up to be able to call a Jog and Row over that token, and we just, we're doing 5 attacks here. So here, we can always go, say, Magoroku Fugen, turn drive, Gonohi, Yamashibuki, we've seen a lot of triggers, so not too surprising. And we still got Jog and Row swinging for 23. Um, Go and Ohi swinging for, I believe, 44 because it's, that's 29, yeah, 44,000. So, and th those are five attacks, most likely swing, swinging for lethal at this point with the crit pressure. Your opponent will have probably like a heal guardian that could block, say, the Jog and Row. It would, it would not block the first swing of the, with the Jaijin. So that's pretty strong, but it could block a Jog and Row, multiple draw or grade zeros to build, or even just a PG to guard one. So that's already two attacks guarded. Multiple grade ones to guard a third, but even then that kind of gets scary with the numbers I was hitting. Um, I mean, with the the Jaijin was two grade three, two grade ones would actually block the Jaijin. So that's not too crazy. So that's just kind of left with grade twos, and you're really having to stack them up with those effects, especially since grade three blocking is limited to heal guards. So that's only really three attacks that could easily be guarded. The other two are a bit questionable too, just lethal. So really strong here. So that's kind of it for my deck profile on Magoroku Fugen here. I don't know how much more there is to test. I mean, there's certainly stuff you could do. The card pool is big enough for that. But at the same time, just the strategies this deck has access to and the card quality makes it kind of hard. So this has felt like the best uh, version of the deck, despite you seeing between the two test hands if this deck gets what it wants, it pops off and it's really strong. It's a very high roll deck. You either see your pieces or you kind of don't, and it's not that great. But it's a more middle ground that, unfortunately, 2D games can't really show off, where you have the Magoroku Fugen, and you have some stuff you can do, but it's not optimal. But overall, and this is just a fun deck to play. If you want to play this competitively, don't. But if you want to have fun with your friends, I definitely highly recommend picking up this deck. And it's also not that expensive at all. I mean... All these cards, I think, here are really cheap. The only one I could think of that might be game of price is the Yamashibuki. But other than that, just a fun deck to play. Nothing else to really say. So look forward to gameplay of this deck. And uh, it's it's an interesting game, to say the least. I definitely think it's worth a watch. And just kind of shows how this deck really feels, though. So look forward to that. Coming out tomorrow.